Hi, Chris Collins here, and we're taking in a hiatus over the Christmas break, but I wanted to showcase some of our best episodes from this year. This one is how you can double your sales in an Equinox, and G-Man and I get into an interesting conversation here about how with no more clients, a gym can double their sales. There's some great business lessons in here for you, no matter what industry you're in. There's a lot of gold in here, and I hope you enjoy. Welcome to Chris Collins Unleashed. All you have to do is listen. Welcome everybody to Chris Collins Unleashed. Hope you're having a great day. How you doing G-Man? Doing good. We um, today's topic is going to be fun. We're just going to throw out some stuff. We're going to riff mm-hmm. back and forth. But today's topic is how you could double the sales at an Equinox. Yeah, for sure. So we go to Equinox, and mm-hmm. we know how they all can the time double the sales. Nobody's asked us. <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody <laughs> comes up and says, "Hey, how do we double our sales?" But dang it, we're going to offer our opinion. <laughs> we're going to tell you a couple things about that. One is we're going to do it without adding any more traffic. So whatever uh-huh. they're selling now in new customers is the same. Whatever they have in memberships, so our focus is not going to be in acquiring new customers. It's going to be, and this will be interesting to everybody listening, how do you make more off of the customers you are already having coming in, Mm -hmm. and how do you convert? Yeah. Convert more. They, uh, how did, you know, we'll we'll talk about that. So I've actually been thinking about this one for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited to, to do it. But me being the best gift giver ever. Yes, absolutely. I gave, G Man for his birthday last year, a bourbon of the month. So I drink tequila. I don't, I'm not a big bourbon fan, but G Man loves bourbon. So if we're smoking a cigar, he's drinking the bourbon. I'm Mm -hmm. drinking the tequila. Actually, you'll cross over to tequila, but I have a hard time crossing over to tequila. Yeah, you won't go that way, but yeah, I'll go the other way for sure. So what is this? um, So I haven't opened this one yet. I mean, even though the box is open, I haven't opened it. If you're not watching the video and you're listening, this is a big black box with a, is it a B on it? No, it's the TC. It's that Taster's Choice. Oh. So they all come in the same box. So the the company that does it, Taster's Choice, that does the bourbon of the month, they just miss, they must unbox it and put it in their own boxes and ship it out. So every time it's the same box, which is kind of fun. Ooh. So oh. it's a yellow, bright lo- yellow label with silver lettering, and it's yeah. Wiggle. Wiggle? Pennsylvanian bourbon. Wiggle. It's hmm. crazy. So crack that, dude. Pennsylvania bourbon. I'm not thrilled with the... Uh... One of our ideas to double the sales at Equinox is not to start selling bourbon, but it wouldn't be a bad idea. So, let's pull. <laughs> so the little label on it says, pull cork, lift spirit. Cute. Ooh, a little pop out I heard that. Okay, so he See? is he's poured it on a couple ice cubes, and now he's going to taste it, and it tastes like oak. That's pretty good. Tastes like oak. I like it. It is pretty uh, woody. Oh, got it. So he we're sliding it, it across he the table. Slid it and spilled <laughs> it all over the table. So I can try it. <laughs> Ooh, that's um. Oh my god. Yeah, that's uh, that's good stuff. What is the deal with that? Why does it just taste like oak? There's not much else going on. They uh they put it in charred oak barrels. So. They actually take them and they burnish the inside of them. Then they pour the whiskey inside. Yeah. So what's your review there? Let's pretend like you're a bourbon <laughs> master sommelier. Let me, let me get a little aroma. It smells like whiskey. Was it a good year? Wow. It's hot, but um, yeah, it's pretty good. Give that one a, a 7 out of 10, I think. Aged 18 months. Small batch. Batch number 7. Well, they could have fooled me. I'd think that thing was sitting in oak for about 20 years. <laughs> so it has notes of cinnamon, salted caramel, and maple syrup. I'm guessing you didn't taste any of that in there. I tasted an oak, <laughs> <laughs> an oak dresser. <laughs> it, tastes like, it tastes like oak barrel and gasoline. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's funny. It's a cool label, though. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Pennsylvania. So the thing I want I want to do here, G Man, is when we're talking about this, I want I want everybody to understand the steps and the theories behind it. Forget that it's Equinox, really. 
unless you you run yeah. Equinox, <laughs> then listen <laughs> to what we're saying because we can double your sales. But if not, uh, think about your business and how all of these lessons apply because we're going to give you some real meat here. And most of the time, we can, in a very, very quick period of time, find a new stream of income for you mm-hmm. in your business. And so we're going to try to do some things like that here too with Equinox. But it doesn't matter if it's a gym, if you own a furniture store, if you're a doctor, a chiropractor, you own a coffee shop. It's mm-hmm. all the same in theory. Yeah. It's conversion. So the first thing that we have going on with Equinox is we have customers coming through the door that are new members and we have existing members, Mm -hmm. correct? And so customers, Equinox does one thing right. Well, they do a lot of things right. So this is in no way an attack on Equinox. They do a lot of things right. We like that gym. Yeah. But there's money there to be made. Yeah, I think the thing that we recognize sitting there every day is we can see the potential and it's just, you know, it's understanding what they do and, and, you know, kind of, and we're also problem solvers, so we're always working the problem, you know? So it's not an indictment on them. We like that, Jim. Yeah, and also, we only go to that that one, so we don't know what it's like. We've gone to other ones when we're, when we're in other parts of the country, mm-hmm. but we've never experienced the signing up membership part in right. other places. Yeah, so true. we don't know. So we're just assuming that they're all the same, but mm-hmm. who knows if, the, if they are or if they are I've been in other gyms before, though, and it's been a similar type of experience, so... I'm sure this applies across uh, multiple multiple spaces. Oh, I would say our buddy um, that has Fit Body Boot Camp. Like, oh, yeah, it's all for the sure. Same. Mm-hmm. It's all the same. So we have two types of customers. We have customers coming in new, and then we have existing mm-hmm. members. And so what the one thing that they do that is a good idea is they have a free workout with a trainer when mm-hmm. you join. So you get a free workout with a trainer when you join, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So we're we're going to try to increase their sales and we're going to try to increase their, by increasing their conversions, we're going to increase their sales is the first part. So there's a couple things going on that happen when, and we just had a bunch of people that we know join there mm-hmm. and none of them bought personal training. Right. And so... The the money is in personal training. And mm-hmm. I think if they had – I would you guess how many trainers they have there? So the funny thing with trainers is – and I'm, I'm – the funny thing with trainers is a lot of trainers are kids just yeah. waiting to find the next thing. Yeah. And so would you say they had 30 trainers there? I think so. I'm just thinking about the wall because they got that one wall with all the pictures on it. I was just kind of doing the math in my head. I'd see it's between 25 and 30 trainers. Okay, and at any given time, how many of those trainers do you see there? Ten? Yeah, probably ten. So I'm going to guess they're at half capacity for what they Mm -hmm. could sell, right? Yeah, ten to fifteen, right? But I think some of those trainers are probably part-time, I'm guessing. Yeah, for sure. But they're at about half their capacity. But then they're bringing in new trainers all the time. Like, you always see those guys coming in the blue shirts, and then they're graduating to the black shirts. Like, it seems like they're constantly recruiting trainers. So there must be some sort of demand for that. So here's the the biggest mistake that business owners make is this one this one that we're going to talk about right now. So you have all these new clients coming in and you have a great thing set up. You have a free workout analysis with a trainer, mm-hmm. right? So the one thing that they have going on is I think about 30% of the new customers coming in actually take them up on that free training. Right. And of that 30% buy a training package. And most of the time it takes them a while to do it. They don't do it right up Mm -hmm. front. So the, the training thing is optional, right? The first thing that I would do is make that forced. Mm -hmm. So I would force the training session. So, So before you could get your membership card, before you could do any of it, we need to do an analysis and we want to get to know you. Sure. So in in some industries, we call it needs analysis, Mm -hmm. but it's like kind of there. It's like, hey, here's your, here's your ID. Go work out. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I would stop that. And as crazy as it sounds, I would try to get to know my clients. So the clients would like this more, but it's like, hey, why are you joining a gym? So at the time of selling, 
you're going to start the needs analysis, but then you're going to instantly hand them over. So there isn't a gap between when they sign up for the membership, I, I would be giving them to the trainer right then to do the analysis. Like I would say, when you come in to sign up, mm-hmm. bring workout stuff, because then we're going to do your analysis. So there's yeah. no gap in between. So 100% of the customers get a free analysis with a trainer. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to up our conversion ratio just because we're getting everyone to do it and it's a forced Yeah. It's you know, a forced transaction. You know who's really good at that is the uh the dentist, right? So the dentist office, they make your appointment for you. So when you're there at the dentist office before you leave, they write it all down, they book it. They don't want you to leave until they booked it for you and then they hand it to you. It's almost like even though it's not mandatory, you can still, you know, you can still fire your dentist to move on. It feels that way. Like by booking that appointment and setting it up ahead of time, it makes it feel like you got to be there, you know? Yeah. Increases accountability. So I, I would make it, but I would actually, I would have the trainers when they're there, they would almost, you know, they would almost be on call and I could find a trainer to do it if yeah. I have to. Like to do a consult. And it would even. And so I've kind of done their numbers in my head, mm-hmm. doubling their sales. So if they were doing, and let's just say a hypothetical number, if they were doing $200,000 a month in personal training, I think we could get it over 400000 and we could pay for somebody who's really good at converting. Because here's the next part that they lose it is, and this is the lesson that I want everybody to understand is they dole those leads out. So somebody comes in and signs up for a membership, they yep. dole those leads out evenly. Mm -hmm. And so they try to fit people by personality. They do not give the leads out by who closes the most to Mm -hmm. training sessions. So you have all these new young trainers that work there that are part-time or full-time. They have no clientele. They have no history of converting anybody to anything. And it's the biggest turnover. You see those young trainers Mm -hmm. come and go. Then you have these trainers that are veterans that have been there a long time that look at it like a career Mm -hmm. and have tenure and they have a higher closing ratio of getting to know people and turning them into actually buying a package of workouts Mm -hmm. and they get the least amount of leads. Right. And so you want to understand in your business, and I learned this in car sales, is whenever I gave a lead to the new kid, the car never sold. Right. Whenever I gave it too much, so what I used to do is I'd walk up, I'd see who's number one or two on the sales board, and if number one was there, they got it. If number two was there, they got it. Mm-hmm. But the car always sold. Mm-hmm. So it's a hard thing. You want to be fair, but actually in business, a lot of times success is in making the younger employee or the fresher employee earn something and go out and get fresh stuff before. How much better would a trainer be if they had to go out and get their own clients Mm -hmm. and not just have them handed to you? Yeah. So if you could build a clientele of 10 customers on your own that are buying training every week, then you would qualify Mm -hmm. for leads. But you, I would not ever dole out leads evenly and make anything fair. Right. Nothing's fair. This is capitalism. Yeah. And that's communism in a lot of ways. But that's what businesses do. They're trying to be fair. But if you flip that script and you make it on performance, then all of a sudden those leads have a value. Yeah. They don't seem to have a value. It's like they do the analysis and it is what it is. But the conversion is terrible. The conversion should be closer to 50%. Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And so so two, just those two things right there would increase sales dramatically. Is mm-hmm. if when you bought the membership, before you could work out, you had to have, you had to get certified on the gym and we had to get to know you and we had to put you in the system. So you just make it like, we can't even create your membership card yet until we've done a needs analysis and we know what your plan is. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And then at that time, the trainer then is going to do the analysis. Now, the second part is the analysis that they do is not humiliating enough. (laughs) So I've been through an analysis before for workouts Uh where you had the cutest girl in the world have you take off your shirt, strip you down to just your shorts, and do a bunch of physical yeah. exercises to prove that you're terribly out of shape, right? Right. So if, if let's just say, for example, and tell me how you would feel. Because when I felt this, I was, I was humiliated. But this was the process. And part of the process of converting a customer is the bigger the show, 
the the more you're you're gonna sell. There mm-hmm. has to be some sort of show and there has to be some emotion involved, right? So the one analogy that I that has always stuck with me is if you're selling fire alarms or you're selling alarms to somebody door to door in a house, what you want to do is tell them all about how many crimes have happened, how many crimes have been prevented, how many houses have burned down. You want to show pictures of the house getting ransacked. You want to show pictures of the houses that are burnt down. Right. And so those emotions and the it's automatic for the customer that they're going to feel like, oh, that could happen to me. Mm-hmm. And then the sale is going to stick, right? Your mm-hmm. conversions are going to be really, really high. Right. But just asking somebody like, oh, well, what are your goals? And oh, we're going to measure your body fat in here way. <laughs> it isn't enough. No. They got to go. That, that needs analysis needs to be an emotional experience. Yeah. So the things that I experienced in one that was really good was they took pictures of me. They don't take pictures of you. Before no. and after pictures in the gym world is everything. Yep. Those pictures should be uploaded to their Equinox app. Right. And so take your shirt off. If you're a guy, if you're a girl, just get down to your workout stuff. We're going to take pictures. Then we're going to put your measurements up there. And mm-hmm. then now we're going to talk about your goals, mm-hmm. right? And have it tied into that. And then do some agility tests. So show how out of shape they are. Make them do sit-ups. Make them do push-ups. Make them do pull-ups. How many pull-ups can you do, Right most people coming in are going to in some shape or form going to be moved emotionally to, Oh, I need to take this serious and I probably need help because right. clients come in and they think, well, I can, I can go to a gym and do it myself. That's what they think. That's what I they can do think. it myself. And yep. so the purpose of that needs analysis is to get them to think I can't do it myself. I need help. Right. And so the more humiliating and the more honest and real it is, the more you're going to convert. And there's absolutely no emotional journey in there, in no. their process. No. None whatsoever. No. There's nothing of... Uh, I it's mean, very it, timid. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's go work out. I'm going to help you. And this, but it's not, like you said, there's no arc to it. There's nothing of value being presented. It just, it's like, you know, and you're, so you're just thinking, okay, well, if all I'm going to do is work out and this guy's going to stand there and watch me. I'll just do that by myself. I don't yeah, need his help. Exactly. And so, and also if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, Chris, that's crazy. You're humiliating people. You don't get it. Like you have to take people on a journey to make their lives better. Yep. Like, so people are going to get in shape. They're going to be better at work. They're going to have more energy. They're going to lose weight. They're going to be healthier. They're going to live longer. All of those things are going to happen all because we put them through a process that took them on an emotional journey. Yep. There's no emotional journey. Pictures are the strongest thing to do in a gym, and they don't do that. Yep. And they got an app. It'd be so easy to to roll it right into the app, right? Mm-hmm. Before and after. Yep. I mean, that's that's the whole key. Yeah, so I agree. The um, yeah, you got to take them on a journey and humiliate them, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, people buy transformation. Yeah, that's what they're buying. And so if they can see the transformation happen, like, and then you got to break them in the beginning. So that they know where they're starting from. And we talked about this in the last podcast about like looking yourself in the mirror and kind of being brutally honest. Well, it's the same thing in the training world. And then how are they going to get to where they want to be? Like give them a clear vision of what that transformation is going to look like and they'll buy. They'll buy. So when we come back, we're going to do the the next step and we're going to reveal how there's a whole missed stream of income there that they're not even doing that we could add into this process that would be continuity. It would be easy to facilitate and it would be big, big margins, Mm. huge margins. So we'll be right back. I'm Andrew, and this is Millennial Business, where I take questions from millennials about their workplace troubles. Welcome, millennial. What is your workplace problem? Hey, Andrew, I'm Molly. Mm, Hello. Um, My workplace is my problem. I work from home. Oh, man, that's Mm. nebulous. You know, it's all purpose, pajama dress code, home office. Yeah, it's becoming an issue. Okay, let's get it out there. What's the issue? Well, okay, I started my own company. Bring it. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, And it's exciting. But the home office situation is distracting. Okay. Mm. I got cats. I got Apple TV. I got Facebook. Mm. And I have nobody to tell me to be productive. Yes. 
the sweet comfort of the home office is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you can call into Google Hangouts, only dress from the waist up. And I do, I love that. Mm, who wouldn't? On the other hand, you can accidentally watch a marathon of movies with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He's so great. He really is. In everything. Oh man, we should just talk about him, but we no. won't. No. So you need to set some rules. All right, lay it out. What do I do? Bring it on. Number one, you get fully dressed in the morning. Oh, oh, come on. I know. No one will see you, but it makes you feel ready for work. Secondly, set hours. Eight to five, nine to seven. Whatever works for you, but keep it consistent and stick to it. If you miss those hours at an office job, you know, you'd get canned. Why would home be any different? Oh, because I'm my boss. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. I got you. I got you. you. Got it. Okay, finally, there are social media blockers that you can install on your computer to limit your scrolling time. Say what? Oh, here it comes. That way, after 30 minutes of reading your best friend's post about how The Walking Dead didn't kill enough main characters last episode, you will get kicked off Facebook and you have to get back to work. Okay, that's perfect. Mm. One, I hate his rants anyway. Right. Walking Dead needs to stop killing my favorite characters, not kill more of them. Yeah. Two, that sounds great. Yeah, great. Awesome. Problem solved. Okay, that is all for this time. But if you have millennial business issues that you just can't solve, tweet us at Bulldog Collins and we'll uh, help you figure it out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to Unleashed. We are talking about how you can double the sales at an Equinox, our Equinox that we go to mm -hmm. m mostly. So the first thing that we talked about is when customers come in to buy a membership is forcing the fruit, the complimentary workout with the trainers and mm -hmm. needs analysis and then giving those leads to the better trainers that convert more. Mm -hmm. So you never give those leads to a young trainer that hasn't built their clientele themselves. Right. We would give it to the ones that have tenure and know how to convert. And then the next thing is we'd make it into a big show. We would take pictures of the client. Mm -hmm. We would do agility tests with them. We'd really do a deep dive instead of kind of what they do now is they weigh you and they do this body fat thing with these things that aren't accurate at all. You what know, are those things called? Calipers. Yeah. So it's not accurate, even close. But don't you think that that process too, like you're talking about, like just now you're saying, make it a big show. And in my head, I'm thinking about the room that they do everything in. It just seems like an afterthought. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like this, it's just not like if it was set up to where like it, it you felt like, okay, this That's is a great, real deal. Great point. Also, whenever you're in that room getting that, people are walking in and Yeah, out. and it's yeah, there's windows and all that stuff. It's like it's weird and I, I don't know. Yeah, they need to they need to and it's an office. It's basically an office that doesn't feel like like a doctor's office feels like you're going to get examined. That feels like somebody's going to do your taxes. Like, it doesn't yeah. feel like, you know, a, like a gym should feel like, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so you're with a, you know, I don't know, maybe half the time you're with a young trainer that isn't established mm -hmm. in that environment. People are coming in and out of the room. You got your shoes off, mm -hmm. your shirt off. And, and then the other thing that I thought instantly when I went through the process years ago was those calipers and the body fat. They're not accurate. So whatever yeah. you tell me my body fat is, like literally I've had them do the calipers and then I've gone to our Dr. Lau and he has that machine where they scan you. Mm -hmm. It's off by like 15 points. Yeah. Like, they, I, I mean, it's crazy. Well, they and, paid 12 bucks for those things. They're made out of plastic. Like yeah, they're, but they're not real. It's in, not real. In the psyche of a client, when you're trying to take something so serious as your health, mm -hmm. you need to you need to elevate the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And so anything like that, you you lose a little bit of credibility with the client, especially if they know anything about body fat. Yeah. They know that those things aren't accurate. Yeah, and they have so they have that way of measuring your body fat where they suspend you in liquid and then they measure you inside of that, those float tanks. You you could imagine walking away from an experience like that and going back and telling your friends, yeah, it was really cool. They did this whole analysis. I had to float and everything. And they gave me really detailed idea of what my you know my body fat was versus yeah, I stood in some weird room with a guy. He's got these plastic calipers and he's pinching me on the sides. Like it's just not the same experience. No, you got to put on a big show. Yeah, with the money that they're the revenue that they're generating, it would be pretty easy to do that. And so just just to kind of clarify, if anybody from Equinox is listening, the process that, that I would suggest trying or putting in place is a process where you're giving them to a more experienced trainer or you have a dedicated trainer that's mm -hmm. just paid on conversions. And so that works really well if you have a really attractive trainer 
and I've had this happen to me before where the, she's really attractive. She's telling me to take off my shirt. She's taking pictures of me. She took pictures of me. So listen to this. She took pictures of me standing up straight. And then she said, bend over and touch your toes. Oh. And she takes a side shot of your gut. Oh. I mean, the, yeah, the standing up straight part's not a big deal. But the no, bending you can suck it in, but the bending over. And then she did an agility oh, test. Man. I would, I would very much up the body fat analysis to the machine yeah. that Dr. Lyle has mm-hmm. that scans you or the dunk tank or something, mm-hmm. but something that's more accurate. You might think, oh, well, that's an investment. You're going to convert like crazy yeah. if you do that. Then the next thing is some sort of workout and stress test where you put them on a bike for a while and see how fast they can go for how long, but make them sprint mm-hmm. and just see what kind of shape they're in. Mm-hmm. And then go to, and then you want to go to, hey, so here's kind of where we're at. What are your goals? Where do you want to be? How much energy do you have? Also, in the questionnaire and the things that they ask you, the questions need to be tailored more towards emotion. Like, how much energy do you have? Mm -hmm. How is your quality of life? Mm -hmm. Not just fitness goals. Fitness goals transcend. Like, when you're in good shape and you feel good, you have energy. You have confidence. So you, you need to go to the person and start with them and really find out where they're at emotionally and beyond just working out what what is holding them back from being successful in life. Yeah, and that's the NLP part of it, right? Where you're just you're kind of painting the picture for them emotionally so that they can put themselves in that place. You know, when you get home at night, do you just, you know, sit down on the couch and fall asleep immediately or do you have energy and you want to go out and ride your bike and take your family to dinner and or, you know, are you just shot for the rest of the day? Because that's really what's, again, it's the transformation from where they are to where they want to be, right? Yeah. And then the, I would do some sort of stress test. Mm-hmm. Like you could go as far as putting the breathing apparatus on somebody <laughs> and have them do the bike. You don't have to go that far. but That was brutal. <laughs> yeah. You could do that on a treadmill or mm-hmm. a bike. I've done it both ways. Mm-hmm. But it's a great test because it tells you your your oxygen, lung capacity. You're, you get worn out really quick, so you feel really out of shape. Mm-hmm. And... It you know it's there's a couple different tools you can use to really figure out where somebody's at. That but that way. has legitimacy too to their findings. And there's nowhere to hide. Yeah, you're so, sitting there like a fat ass on the treadmill, right. dying after two minutes. And, and they slap like, a mask on that, you. It's a big show, and they give you a printout. You know, yeah, the whole thing. The yeah. average person can go twelve, and you went three. Mm-hmm. You know, and so then that's the whole fitness part of it. Part of it. That whole thing should take an hour. Yeah, and it. It should be an emotional experience. We should get to know the client. We should we should create goals together. And then the next thing, and here's where the new stream of income comes in. And there's actually two new streams of income, although they're cousins to each other, that they totally miss, that it's right there. And all they have to do is bend over and pick it up. All they have to do is open their eyes and bend over and pick it up. And the craziest thing is when we go to the gym in the morning, it isn't even available for us to ask for hmm. this thing. Like it's closed until eight o'clock if you, wanted to do, if you wanted to do it. So when we come back from the break, I'm going to share those two new streams of income with you and how you, I mean, I know people are going to be listening to this and think, Oh, I could do that in a yep. coffee shop or, or whatever it is. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Hello there, fanboys and girls. I'm Daniel Z. Barber, and this is Amazing Moments in Business. Today, I'm going to take a look at that moment when a little indie film studio called a Disney acquired Marvel. Now, this made my heart sing, as I'm sure it did many of yours, because up until now, the Marvel rights were scattered over the industry like so many sunflower seeds. The X-Men were over at Fox, Spider-Man was swinging at Sony, And Marvel finally found a home at the biggest blockbuster and franchise machine that there was, Disney. Now, up until now, Disney's uh, offering was largely for kids and families with a lot of princesses and musicals. Of course, the Pixar animated classics, which we all know and love. But with Marvel, they really roped in a lot of uh, people who had grown up knowing and loving comic books, a lot of males, a lot of millennials. And that has translated into big, big money for them. So it all began with a little project called the Avengers, and we have to go back even earlier to see the road that got us there. 
Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Captain America, Thor, all were leading up to Avengers, which it's easy to look back on now and say, of course, it was a billion dollar success story. What could they possibly have been worried about? But they were worried because if that movie failed, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And that just wouldn't have been one box office bomb. That would have derailed their hopes for any more Captain America, more Iron Man, more Thor. It would have killed in its crib any dreams of a standalone Hulk movie or Black Widow, which I'm still keeping my fingers crossed for. But the fact of the matter is that Disney's four billion dollar investment, which hopefully we'll all get to make one day, has paid off in spades because the Marvel Cinematic Universe to date, including Guardians of the Galaxy and Spider-Man, who with Homecoming has finally come back to the Disney camp, has grossed over $12 billion. And that's just at the box office. I'm not even talking about licensing, promotions, merchandising rights. (sighs) My head gets spinning just thinking about it. That's all the time we have. I hope you've enjoyed geeking out over this as much as I have. Stay geeky, friends. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking about how you can double the sales at our Equinox that we go to. So I think with what we've shared already with just taking the leads, forcing uh, an analysis Mm -hmm. on the clients with the trainer, giving those leads to the trainers that have longevity and convert, and then having a better process that's more of an emotional experience and you really get to know the client, mm-hmm. they would double their sales. Yeah. But we're, but we're not done. I think but you could more. do two of those four things and double your sales. Yeah. I don't even think you need to do them all. But there's more. Yeah. There's more. So then the next one is when we go there, so they there's two things that they could do that would just be easy money and would require very, very low personnel. In fact, you could outsource it if you wanted to. Hmm. If you were the, if you didn't want to deal with it, you could outsource it. But there's two things. Meal planning. So the, the mm. last part of the analysis should be meal planning yep. because they touch nothing with meals. Yeah. They don't even talk to you about food, really. Yeah. And so you could do pre-made meals. I think one out of five clients would buy it. We've done it where we have meals delivered, oh, yeah. right? Yep. So you could you could partner with somebody who does the meals already, mm-hmm. and then you could sell them meals that are delivered to their home and their office mm-hmm. in pre-done meals. And then the next one is supplements. And when we get there in the morning, the the protein shake bar thing isn't even open. Yeah, they don't even open until after we're gone. Yeah. And so part of that should be continuity on protein. We yeah. buy protein powder and pre-workout, and where do we get it? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Amazon. <laughs> Nobody's ever offered us anything there. <laughs> no. But what if it was just delivered for us? Well, we were talking about this the other day, right? I was running late one time. It was, the traffic was bad coming from my place. And uh, I texted you and said, look, I'll just meet you at the gym. So, so we meet here at the office. And walk. And we walk down to the gym together. And so... There are times when I have to drive a bit to get here, and so there's times when I can't make it. I'll just drive straight to the gym. G-Man li- lives at the beach. That's right. I live at the G-Man beach. G-Man at the beach. <laughs> Ride my skateboard there. But um, anyway, so yeah, so I'm running late, and, and my, all my pre-workout stuff is here at the right. office. And so I was thinking, we were just talking about this the other day. I was like, man, if they just had it available... They it, don't, they're closed. It could be $8 and that I would buy it. Is packed. <laughs> you could want You're it. waiting for a machine there. It's packed. <laughs> yeah. And you can't buy a pre workout. Yeah, it's packed to at six in life. the morning. Yeah. They don't open until eight or whatever. It's nuts. Yeah. yeah. So think about that. So we're prepping our stuff the night before or that morning to go work out. What if they had it prepped in there for you? Right. Oh, Mr. Collins, welcome. Here's your pre workout. You know, here's your towel. Let's head up the stairs. Yeah, I, I mean, but, people would pay for that. I mean, we if, would pay for that <laughs> if you're if you're super lazy and you don't want to do that. Just drop ship it to us. Yep, there you go. Yeah. I mean, they're not getting any, so we're buying it on Amazon, and we don't even know if it's good. Like, right. we don't, the other thing is, we're buying all this crap. We don't even know if it's poison. Right. The thing with Equinox is they like they have the ability to have experts that can advise us and counsel us. We don't yep. know what we're doing. Yeah, we're unqualified to be buying pre workout. Right. We're, we're like, oh, yeah, I like the taste of this grape one. Mm-hmm. But we don't know what's in there. There's like a million things in there. We could be drinking nuclear waste for all we know. <laughs> right? right? drinking straight carcinogen. But <laughs> nobody nobody's giving us any advice on how to do it, what's good. Right. There's no after workout. If they were really good, we'd be drinking a pre-workout, an after workout, and we'd be having our meals delivered. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And protein? Yeah. So how many times a day should you be drinking protein? A shake. Two, two or three? Two or three, yeah. Never has anybody offered me protein yeah. there. They could be selling that stuff on continuity. That you just automatically run the card. And so the great thing, and we haven't talked about this, but it's dawning on me right now, is that then they could measure the results of that. Like the trainer would have another swing at you. Let's say you didn't buy the first time, but he gave you a, a plan and they were providing you with pre and post workout supplements. He could have a circle back around where he measures the results and says, how's the pre-workout treating you? How do you feel? How's the post-workout? Are you losing weight? Like what, what are your stats? And then he can adjust your meal plan based on that, right? Oh, forever. And what if they opt not to get the meal plan and you're tracking the results and you look, really, I suggested this meal plan. Right. But it's always <laughs> going to be there and people are always going to take it. They're going to get frustrated. Yep. And the answer is, go- you're going to have the answer. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, basically what happens now for most people that go to that Equinox is they go and they're left to their own devices to be experts on fitness, Mm -hmm. experts on nutrition, and experts on supplements. Mm -hmm. And none of which, one of them we get covered because we buy training, Mm -hmm. but the other two, nobody's ever talked to us about. And on top of all that, they need to have a willpower of steel because they don't have anybody forcing them to work out every day. Yeah, so if they're well, not, no. if they don't buy the training thing, they, they're missing out on the whole thing. Oh, the there's whole tons of stats about that too, that they could yeah. be using. I mean, we could write a presentation. It would be crazy. Yeah. Like when you, if you're serious about it and you invest in yourself, mm-hmm. I mean, it's too, it's too easy. Yeah. The process is just, it's in fact, too I easy think, to say no. I think that just with the meal planning and supplements, we're tripling their sales. Oh, man. It's huge numbers. I think the meal, the meal How plan much do and we supplements. Spend on that stuff? Oh, it's ridiculous amounts yeah. of money. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the, the supplement alone would double their, their current revenue. There's no doubt. No doubt. And the margins Zero. on this stuff are good. Zero. Yeah. They're not doing any of it. They could, they could even then private label. I mean, I don't know we're getting ahead of it, but they could private label that stuff too at the end of it. They could well, be yeah. Econoch brand, you know, whatever. Yeah. It would be too easy. Mm-hmm. They could drop ship it to our house. Yep. They're not even offering it. It would take nothing. You could have a computer program print those labels out. You could outsource that to somebody. Yeah. In the middle of the country. Yeah. It's funny. I was reading some of the Equinox reviews, and one of the things that people are always talking about is they got all the towels, right? So you get towels. There are hundreds of towels everywhere. Um, And then the eucalyptus towels, you know, they have the cold ones in the morning, the wet ones. They were talking about how great that is. and, And what a great experience it is having that amenity. Could you imagine having your supplements like pre planned and prepared for you ahead of time? I mean, people would just go bananas over that. Oh, it would be crazy. It would take it to a whole new level. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And Great so idea. The, then the next thing that we could do with, so with the supplements and the meal planning is we could lower turnover on trainers because if the trainers sell that, we could give them a little percentage Yeah, and we could gamify it. So in our, in our system, or if you've read our book, Gamification Selling for Profits, you could make those products your most valuable products. You could have a higher margin on them, mm-hmm. pack in a spiff mm-hmm. or a percentage for the trainer. If the trainers are making more, they're not going to leave. Yep. Because there's a lot of turnover in trainers. And it's kind of an in-between job. But mm-hmm. it could be more of a career. And why not let them make, a, you know, make more money yeah, and sure. keep them there? Yeah. It's all relative to your increase in sales. Yeah, the revenue per customer goes up. So what they make per customer would go up, right? And then that makes, like you said, makes them want to stay, makes them happier, makes them drive harder. They want to sell your stuff for you. Yeah, it's all good. It's a plus plus. Yeah, because the one thing too in all of this, like a lot of times when we do things like this in a business, there's there's benefits that you don't even realize are going to be there. And one of the benefits of this would be your trainers, your turnover and trainers would lower, mm-hmm. which would be a huge deal. Well, I think the stick rate too of your facility, like I'm sure that's one of the things that gyms struggle with is that people who, you know, who just bail out, you know, they start the year off with great intentions, but then around, you know, April, May, June, they didn't get in beach shape like they wanted to. And so they just they just abandon the whole program and leave. But having this would help them to stick. They'd start to see results. They'd stay in longer. Yeah, and just think about like how Weight Watchers does it and people go weigh in and they mm-hmm. confess. If you had it in the app and people were confessing, mm-hmm. I mean, it would work. It really would work. You want to make it as raw as you possibly can. Yeah, it's like it's the gym, it's Nutrisystems and Weight Watchers all together, all rolled into one. The big show is what we would call it. Yeah. Yeah, so there's two, two new streams of income for them that all they have to do is turn them on. It wouldn't even take much coordination Mm-mm. whatsoever. So 
in any business, the, the lesson here is that you don't need more clients most of the time. It's rare that we work on giving a business more customers until we can convert on the ones that we have. Yep. And so in every business, you can have some sort of continuity where you're drop shipping them something just about in every business. Mm -hmm. And you can give your leads to your best people. You can track the conversions, reward on conversions. Mm -hmm. And then you have to come up with a big show. There has to be a big presentation. Mm -hmm. You have to take people on an emotional journey to get them to commit. And when you do that, you're actually doing them a favor yeah. because then they're going to work out and they're going to take action. Mm -hmm. Where I think like gyms, like Equinox, a lot of times they're like, oh, we got all these members and they're paying every month. That's continuity. And they're not really that concerned with how many people are going to actually work out and change their lives and get better. And there's more continuity there. And they feel like, oh, we can't stack continuity and continuity. Yes, you can. <laughs> You right. can stack continuity all day long. Right. Why not? There'll be, there'll be clients that will get, you'll run their card for a thousand dollars and they'll be really happy because they got their meals. They, they got their supplements and everything's in one place. And the person qualified to educate them and advise them on that is the person doing it. Right. They're not left to their own devices. Like we are like what proteins better. Right. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many tools there that, that they could use. So that's our, that was pretty fun, actually. That was fun. <laughs> Did I get too excited? No, I like it. It was, was good. Was I yelling? <laughs> was I yelling, Lucas? You got animated, though. I got animated? <laughs> I'm excited. So that's our how to double your sales at our Equinox or your business also. So there's a lot yep. of gems in there. And it's mindset. It's how you think. But you can increase your revenue pretty easily in any business just by working on your system, how it's presented, how you track it. and it goes conversion. Yeah, for sure. I would just add one extra thing is it's fun for us to walk into a business and look at it from the 30,000 foot view and see things maybe they don't see. Um, I would, if, if I were out there listening, I would recommend uh, mirroring that behavior in your own business. Like walk in as if you've never right. gone there before, walk in the front door, like a customer instead of coming in the back. If, if you have a business, have a business like that. And start to take a look at it from their perspective and look at what's being left on the table, what you can take advantage of. Because in every business, there's something. Oh, yeah. we we. So I love the story. Dean Grazioli did that with his business. He hired a friend mm -hmm. just to go through his whole process for like, what, a year? Yeah, something like that. And he learned yeah. a ton of things. Yeah. And he improved his conversions, his stick rate, all kinds of stuff just by making the customer experience better. Yep. He said he found... 33 points to improve his, his business. And here's a guy yeah. that's pretty successful to begin with. So he found 33 points of improvement. I Yeah, that's that's the tactic everybody has to take. Yeah, and so he probably couldn't <clears throat> separate himself enough, so he hired a friend mm -hmm. to do it. And he said, just be brutal and honest and think like if you were a customer and you invested in this, what? how did you feel? You know. Yeah. And it was all about the feelings because how the client feels is going to determine their behavior. People make decisions on feelings. Yeah, for time. sure. Absolutely. Well, we hope you have a great week, and please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Absolutely. Say a prayer for G-Man. <laughs> Say a prayer for G-Man. Pour a little bourbon out for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a midlife crisis. Where's the Corvette? Oh, man. Why don't you unbutton a couple buttons on your shirt, and we're going to get you a pinky ring. I have my, I have my this the Corvette of skateboards. <laughs> Oh, geez. It was funny. We were talking to somebody today, and they overheard the story, and then they go, I hope you wear a helmet on that skateboard. I know. He was like, no. He's been talking to my wife, unfortunately. He Does she want been. you to wear a helmet? Oh, my God. She's on me 24-7. She told me I can't ride it anymore until I get a helmet. I like it. It's been forbidden. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You've fallen twice. I know. The third time, are you done? I don't know. We'll have to talk about it the third time, because I don't know You're going to chip a tooth or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were talking about breaking bones this morning made me think a little bit, so we'll see. If you, I broke a bone, I've never, rough. I've never broken a bone either. I've never have. No, never, not once. But I'm less, um, I'm less prone to Knock doing on. crazy stuff. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so funny. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you on the next show. See you.